Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Vineyard Columbus. Grateful that you're here. If you don't know me, my name's Paul. I'm one of the pastors here. And we are going to get started with a time of worship. So if you're in the room and you're able, why don't we stand together? Welcome to those of you that are watching online. Glad you're with us. Uh, but as we prepare our hearts for this new year, as we look forward to 2024, let's start by centering our attention, our focus on Jesus today. Let's worship him. Let's welcome his presence here uh, and sing together.
never change You stay the same Take a moment together to consider what it is that we just sang. That God is constant, that He never changes, that even though our circumstances, our world, our families, our jobs, they all change, they all fluctuate, but God remains steady. Maybe just take a moment to consider the way or ways this morning that God has been steady and faithful in your life. And maybe as we wait, just take a a second in your own heart to say thank you. Thank you, God, for your steadiness, your faithfulness, that you don't change on a whim, that you remain the same. We say thank you, God, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Thank you, God. that over again. You are the same yesterday, today, forever. That's good news today. It's the truth that you are the same yesterday, today, forever. Oh, God, you never change. You are the same yesterday, Yes, God, we thank you for that today. Would you remind us of that truth? That whether we find ourselves in a season of joy or a season of pain, a season of confusion, a season of waiting, that you remain the same, faithful Father, Would you wake us up to that truth again today? We thank you for your presence in this place. Would you continue to speak to us this morning? In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Please be seated. Uh, we'll continue our worship this morning uh, by taking a moment to honor God through our giving. And as we do that, I would invite you here in a moment to
pray this prayer with me that we often pray here, even though it's a, the last day of the year, it's a special day, but we want to plug back into our discipline of giving. The thing that we practice over and over to make what this time is a regular rhythm for our lives. To be reminded that what we have is not ours. In fact, even ourselves are not ours, but it's from the Lord. So as a reminder, would you pray this prayer with me? Lord, there is nothing I have that you have not given me. All I have and am belongs to you. To spend everything on myself and to give without sacrifice is the way of the world. But generosity is the way of those who follow Jesus, whose hearts are in your kingdom and not in the systems of the world. I am determined to increase in generosity until it can be said that there is no needy person among us. I am determined to be trustworthy with such a little thing as money that you may trust me with true riches. I offer what I have today in worship to you with gratitude for all you've done. Amen. Amen. And may that be true in each and every one of our lives. For those of you who might be, this is your first time, or actually the easiest way that you can give is by texting the word GIVE to the number 98977. And for those of you here in person in Westerville, um, if you'd prefer giving in person, we'll be passing around the bags here shortly. Or as in right now, so we'll do that now. Uh, well, good morning. My name is John, and I'm one of the pastors here. It's uh, a delight to worship with you here on this last day of this year, 2023. Congratulations, you all made it. Give a round of applause for yourselves. <clears throat> Thanks for joining us. It's great to always worship regardless of what day it is. Um, if this is your first time or you're new around here checking us out, uh, we're so glad that you're here with us. Maybe you came back from uh, one of the Christmas services last, last week, which was really, really great. Uh, welcome back. Welcome for those of you who are online, maybe checking us out. If you have not had a chance to uh, connect with us and get to know us, we would love to have that chance. Uh, so the easy way that you can do that is by taking out your phone again uh, and texting the word hi to the number 98977. And when you do that, you'll get a form back. And if you fill that out for every form that you fill out, we'll be donating $5 on your behalf to a local organization that are reaching out to people who are in need of resources. Uh, and so, so even for that, I think there is uh, some motivation for you to fill that out. But otherwise, uh, then we can get in touch with you, follow up with you, and see how we can um, be of a good help and a resource to you as you're looking for uh, new resources and community in this coming year. Now, if you have been around here for a while and you have not yet taken that step to become a part of the community, an active part, a uh, member of this church. There's no greater time uh, than this new year that is coming for you to take that step. And so we have an event called Welcome to Vineyard. That's going to be happening on, at 1230. Uh, that's on a Sunday at 1230 uh, here in, in a couple weeks in the new year. We have lunch provided uh, by our delicious cafe that is in-house in at Irie Jam. And also we have childcare for those of you who have children that may need some childcare. And they also have lunch provided. So if that's something that's been in your mind and you have not yet crossed that line to be with us uh, on our mission uh, to build multi-ethnic communities of disciples who experience God, love one another, and partner with Christ to heal the world, we invite you to do that uh, here in a couple of weeks. Um, so you can check out all the information about what I just shared at vineyardcolumbus.org slash this week. And also you can check out our outline for the message today. Um, and this message today is brought by both of our senior pastors. So we have a special treat today as we finish the year. So would you help me in welcoming up Pastors Eric and Julia Pickerel for the last time this year. Thanks, John. Good morning. Thanks, guys. Happy New Year. Not yet. Close enough. Happy New Year's Eve. 
And uh, let me begin just by welcoming all of our campuses. We're all here together today, here meaning virtually. So Grandview, East, Sawmill, Vina Grandview, Vina Westerville here. And for those of you online, good morning. It is good to be together. I'm grateful that you are here um, today. I want to begin really quickly just by giving a huge thank you. You know, we talk a lot as a church about all of the work that we do when we send people. It's the work of the mission of God, which is really great work that we do. There is also a lot of work that happens across all of our campuses that just allows us to gather together. There are folks who work with kids across all of our campuses. There are folks at different campuses that press buttons that let this like simulcast thing go. There are folks who are carrying cameras around. You see them because we are a church of campuses, our worship folks, safety, security, uh, hospitality. If you are a part at your campus of helping a Sunday morning run, do you mind just raising your hand so that we can say thank you? Now, I know that you're here. Raise your hand up. Thank you, Jason. He's raising his hand. Thank you. You may not know this, but the large majority of people that you see across our campuses, um, all, sorts of, all sorts of work that is being done are all people who are giving their time, our worship leaders, folks in the band. There is something good about using your gifts to be a part of the body of Christ, both outward but also inward. So for those of you who do that really faithfully, especially over this past year, um, Eric and I are incredibly grateful and wanted to say thank you this morning. That's all right. Well, we hope you have a wonderful new year. This is a big day for Julia and me. It is our 30th wedding anniversary. So we got married 30 years ago on New Year's Eve because there's always a party and it's, it's a great day to celebrate, isn't it? So we, we do have a lot to be thankful for. But this morning we- I love you, man. I love you, woman. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, parenthetically, let me just say, it is a remarkable thing. Like, you're a remarkable man. You were a remarkable man when I met you when you were 20 and you had your long locks. <laughs> I should have brought pictures, but I didn't. We're not supposed to go there. I'm just saying, I'm really grateful for you. Thank you. I'm yeah. really grateful for, for real. you. Okay. I love you. Just, I thought I'd say that. This morning, what we want to do is lead us in a reflection from 2023 to 2024. And uh, I don't know about you, but um, I think most of your algorithms for TikTok and YouTube change this week from like dog and cat videos or in my case, motorcycle and knitting videos. I actually went down a knitting hole on YouTube this week because one of our family members is into knitting and I wanted to get the perfect gift and now I have lots of knitting videos to watch. Super exciting. Anyway, your algorithms are changing from dog and cat videos to fix your life videos, right? Because it's that week of the year where you've got to fix your life. My, my mom, I had a conversation with her a couple of days ago, and she said, uh, it was after Christmas, and she went home, and she said, oh, sweetie, I forgot to tell you that I left a 10-pound candy bar on your porch. 10 pounds. Did you hear that? A 10-pound candy bar. You're, you're American, so you're like, yeah, of course. That's like, <laughs> that's what we do. I eat 10-pound candy bars every day, right? So I immediately ate the candy bar, and then, and then my YouTube feed is how to lose 20 pounds in a month, right? So it's like, you know, it, it, it is that time where you've like, I've got to, I got to get some things. I'm reflecting on the last year. I'm going to change some things. And uh, what we want to do today is not that. You're welcome. Uh, we don't want to do, uh, you know, a message on how to stop sinning so you can make God happy. Or, you know, five steps to spiritual wholeness. That, that's not what we want to do today. What we want to do is we want to do a couple of things. We want to look back and look forward and recognize that God has been present to us and he's been present to you. And we want to recognize the ways in which God has been present. So we're going to do something a little different today. So 
we want to reflect on what God has done and what he's doing. And there's a wonderful psalm that I love this translation of Psalm 139. It says this, you've gone into my future to prepare the way. And in kindness, you follow behind me to spare me from the, the harm of my past. With your hand of love upon my life, you impart a blessing to me. I love that psalm. God's intention toward us is good. It's blessing, amen? God's intention toward us is good. It is blessing. He's gone ahead of us to prepare a way, and he's behind us, healing us from the harm of our past. Thank God that this is who God is. And so what we want to do is just really quiet ourselves. We, we begin our daily devotional, if you've not listened to that. We, we begin with a, a little just liturgy every day, and we say the same thing, and I'm going to begin that way today. And as we begin, I just want to invite you to quiet yourself, to take a deep breath, to welcome God's presence. And we say, come Holy Spirit. You've gone into my future to prepare the way. And in kindness, you follow behind to spare me from the harm of my past. With your hand of love upon my life, you impart a blessing to me. Amen. A huge part of why every so often we want to slow down and do this work of contemplation is because it's in the practice of our faith that we become the people that God has called us to be. You'll never be a fully formed Christian until you actually walk out the way of Christ. And a part of walking out the way of Christ is recognizing where he is in your life. You can have a hundred Bible verses memorized and yet not have eyes to see what he's doing in your world, even when times are really difficult. So again, what the psalmist is telling us is that the Lord is present with us all the time. Even in the spaces of your life where you feel like he's far off. In your past, in your future, in your present. Now, now this can be hard to understand, but it is a good thing to sink into. A, a huge part of what we're called to do as Christians is to be present to the presence of God. Even now. You come to church, maybe you're sitting at a campus or you're sitting here and you've got a child sitting next to you. Or you've got a spouse sitting next to you. You've got a new friend sitting next to you. Even now, the Lord is present in you and in your relationships with one another. He's brought you here for his purposes. And if we can't slow down and recognize that, We'll just be Christians who are really good at flight forward all the time. And the problem with that is that we have a lot of head knowledge, but we still react out of our own selves. Do any of you notice that about yourself? You know a lot about the Bible, and yet, in the moment when it counts, the big fight, someone pulls in front of you. You don't react with your head knowledge. You react... I mean, you might be quoting a Bible verse, but you're kind of doing that instead of cussing, right? <laughs> Somebody does that. 
So here's the test of Christian formation. Christian formation is not the state of our souls and our behaviors when we're cozy in bed on a Saturday morning and we're listening to our daily devotional and you know, the, the house is quiet and everything is lovely and maybe a little candle and you just feel all, like that's not, that's not when push comes to shove for our Christian formation. Christian formation is found in those moments where you're at school and someone takes a swing. Or you get a letter from the college that you were hoping for and it's like the thin letter that says, unfortunately. Or your spouse loses a job again. Or your Facebook feed is throwing all this vitriol towards you about political violence, whatever side you're on. It's in those moments, the moments of crisis, the moments when it matters, the moments where everyone else is losing their head and acting out of their own gut reaction, regardless of how many Bible verses they know. It's in that moment that the question comes to you, can you respond in the way of Jesus? And you can't if you haven't practiced being present to him. We have friends who on the winter solstice, I love this um, uh, routine, on the winter solstice, they, they drive around and they look at Christmas lights. They called it looking for the light. So the darkest night of the year, what they do is intentionally go out and they look for the light. And that's what we wanna talk about, being Christians who are practiced at looking at the light, both in our history and anticipating the light in this future year to come. Paul writes to the Corinthians, for God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us, get this, the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed on the face of Christ. That what God has for us is the knowledge of the glory of God's goodness that's displayed on the very face of Christ. That that light is meant to inhabit our hearts. That's why we look for the light. So we want to do a couple of prayer exercises. The first one that we want to do is looking back. And there's an ancient practice in the church that Christians have prayed for centuries called the prayer of examine. There are some traditions that uh, twice a day there's a prayer of examine. Uh, for some it's once a day at the end of the day or at the end of a week. What we want to do right now is pray a prayer of examine over the last year. Now when you hear the word examine you might think of a test and you're like oh no I failed God's test. That's not what the prayer of examine is. So again, you're welcome. We're not going to do that. We're gonna look actually with a different posture. The, the prayer of examine is about looking for God's movement in your life over a morning, over a day, over a week. So you're paying attention. Where have I seen God moving? You're examining your life for places where you've seen God moving. And so the, the attitude Think of it as uh, the Apostle Paul in, in Philippians 4 describes, I think, a great approach to this prayer of exam. And he says, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. He says, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And here, I think, is the key verse. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Think about such things. It's recognizing the goodness of God in your life over the past year. There's a wonderful book called The Other Half of Church that I'd recommend to you that really dives into the importance of remembering and how 
uh, a practice of remembering shapes us, informs us. The scriptures tell us 350 times to remember, 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 remember. And, and the reason for that, I, th I think, is because remembrance leads to a practice of gratitude that develops joy in our lives. Who wants to be joyful? Mm -hmm. You don't choose to be joyful any more than you choose to have low blood pressure. Uh, the way you become joyful is you develop practices that create moments of gratitude. And those moments of gratitude accumulate and they create joy in our lives. And one of the, the most important ways to do that is through remembering. So yesterday, Julie and I, we did uh, every five or 10 years, we clean out our basement. We had that pleasure yesterday of cleaning out our basement and the trash guys are gonna hate us this week. Literally, the garage is full of trash. I don't know what that says about us, Julia. Garbage in, garbage it's out. It's special trash. It, it I mean, is. it's not like trash. It's like, like, oh, look, there's a box for that DVD player that yeah. we bought 20 years ago. It's like, you know. We don't have any DVDs anymore. Let's. We do, though. We did. And tapes. Found a lot of cassette tapes. Anyway, go ahead. So we came across literally hundreds of memories, photographs, old cards, so many just wonderful memories that were in boxes, right? And this morning I, I paused and, and I just sat for five minutes and, and I, I thought about one thing that I came across yesterday out of the hundreds, probably thousands of things that we touched. And, and the one that I sat with this morning, I don't, I don't remember doing this, but I, when we moved to Amsterdam in the Netherlands uh, as a part of a mission team with this church to plant a, a vineyard church there, one of the things that, that I did after getting there is I cut the airline baggage tag off of our suitcases for my son and me, and I threw them in a box, and I, I came across that yesterday. And so I just sat with that memory of that. That was the memory that I that came to this morning and I sat with it and I began to experience that memory again and all of the emotions of that memory. And I remember sitting on the airplane with my son with a journal that I gave him, this travel journal. I remember on the airplane writing to him um, I don't remember what I wrote, but I know it was deeply meaningful and profound. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I remember giving that to him on the airplane. I remember getting, I remember arriving and waking up after jet lag, after red eye, and being super sad. I remember also sitting there in a stranger's living room and writing in an empty apartment, my son was still asleep, just writing what I had hoped for for our first two weeks. I remember later that day going out and looking for apartments because we had a week to get a place to live for Julia and, and our youngest two who were gonna join us a week later. And I remember that feeling of going out with like trepidation and excitement. So all of these, these uh, memories just flooded over me this morning as I just sat with that one memory. So in, in the other half of church in this book, the, the thing that they describe is the importance of memories that are connected to God's goodness. And as I reflected on why did that memory out of all of the things that I touched yesterday come to mind, and there were a number of things that I just was so thankful for so thankful for my kids that they took this journey with us. So grateful for God's faithfulness over our lives. And you know, I could look back over those years and trust me, I could describe terrible things. Those things are not difficult to recall. To create gratitude 
you have to look for the light in your life. And so what I want to do right now is I just want you to get quiet and close your eyes wherever you are. And over this past year, I want you to scan your memory. It doesn't matter what memory, as long as it's something that makes you feel grateful. Think of a memory from this past year that you're grateful for. It could be something really big, big moment. It could be something really small. And I want you to go back and relive that memory for the next 30 seconds. Now I want you to do a next step and ask, where was the Lord in that memory? And why is he impressing that mem memory on you right now? And now I want you to just give that memory a shorthand name in your mind. Okay. Does anyone feel more grateful now? Does anyone feel more connected to God now? You know, one of the things that is really important for us in this prayer of examine is to learn that we actually need, and God wants us to have integrated lives, that our spiritual life isn't over here and the rest of our life isn't the rest of the room, that God is in the midst of it all. He's present to us and he's with us and even in those mundane moments where you feel like, wow, I, I, why did I have that just small memory come up? You recognize that even in those small places, God is with me. God is with me. God is blessing me. And if you want to do something really good for yourself over the next week, is you just do this every day, five minutes a day over the next week, and you think of a memory and you recognize God's goodness to you, and you just sit with it for five minutes, and God will renew your life. Amen. And it's important to recognize this, the, the natural way that you and your minds and all of us will go is, is negative. So it's, we, we are the same as our algorithms, right? And this goes back to entropy and our theology of sin. It is much easier, and, and if you're younger, really think about this. Maybe you're in middle school or in high school. It will always be easier for you to recall the negative. It'll always be easier for you to recall the critique. But Christians are called to be people of faith, hope, and love. And we cannot be those kinds of people in practice. We can be them in theory, but we can't be them in practice unless we practice. One of the things 
that I found was a, a, a note. I write quotes of my family members and friends down. It's dangerous to be around me. But I'd written a quote down of one of my sons when he was eight. And I must have been having, a, I don't know what I was doing with him, but I, I wrote, so mom says, so Lucas, imagine that you are in a boat and the boat has a hole in it and the boat is sinking. What should you do? Now, I don't know why I asked him that question. I feel like it's a pretty dark question. Anyways, his answer was, I would stop imagining. <laughs> That's neither here nor there, but I felt it's worth repeating. <laughs> what I want us to do, again, we're gonna practice, and our hope is that you begin to integrate this into your lives. We're gonna go from looking back and we're gonna to move towards anticipating the year to come. The year to come, as you know, is 2024. There's a handful of things going on that we can anticipate that are coming in 2024. Some of them corporate, some of them individual. Now, when we begin to think about our futures, very often what we encounter is this great sense of uncertainty, right? And because of our news cycle and social media now, we are in some ways addicted to uncertainty. And if you check the headlines every morning, and kind of like you run a slot machine, <laughs> like, what am I gonna get today? We are addicted to the adrenaline rush of uncertainty. How good or bad is the news going to be? That impacts how we practice our faith as Christians. But what we know to be true is this, is that God has gone into our future to prepare the way. I want to remind you of this. You never take God anywhere with you. Missionaries never take God places. God is there. God is everywhere. He is ever present outside of time. You can't understand it. You never are like, I just feel like the Lord wants me to take God to my family's house. God's there. The question is, can you find him? Do you have eyes to see him? Can you look for the light? And can you prepare yourself to meet what God is preparing for you? That's the real question. Can you show up in that sort of way? So this exercise that I want to move us through right now, and, and some of you across campuses, I know you're like, gosh, this is low and slow. I'm losing track. I'm making my shopping list. Just dial in. <laughs> and I caught some of you. It's hard to slow down, isn't it? What I want to do is ask you a few questions. The first question is this. What are a few challenges personally that you can anticipate coming in 2024? Just think for a moment. And some of you, maybe you've got a student who's going off to college and you recognize that's going to be a really big deal. Some of you are heading into your senior year and you're like, that's gonna be a really big deal next year. Some of you might be uh, walking with a spouse or a loved one through memory loss and you anticipate, okay, this memory loss might become more severe. How are we going to maintain a relationship with respect and dignity in this space? Just imagine for a moment. What are you anticipating personally? For some of you, it's family rupture because of politics. It's already starting. The meme wars. <laughs> so take a moment with me and imagine what's one personal challenge that you're anticipating. And I want you to think for a moment. You can close your eyes if it helps you focus in. Just don't nap. I want you to describe to yourself, how do I feel when I anticipate this challenge? What feelings does it stir up in me? And I wanna follow up with that by you thinking to yourself, what is my most natural reaction to this situation going to be? For many of you, it's some variety of freak out. <laughs> What's my most natural reaction? And 
Now what I'm going to invite you to is to take that situation and to consider it in light of Scripture. God, God has gone into my future to prepare the way. So whatever it is you're imagining, God has gone into my future to prepare the way. For God has made his light shine in my heart to give me the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. Now what I want you to imagine in your mind's eye is the situation of challenge that's before you. And I want to help you think about what, what does it mean for you to respond in that moment, in that challenge, in a way that is formed by the presence and the likeness of Jesus Christ, not your own gut reaction. And I want you to think for a while this week about what is it going to be like for you to get to that situation of challenge. Maybe it's scary. Maybe it's exciting. What's it going to take for you to recognize that the Lord is preparing you for that? And that he wants you to encounter that thing, not out of your gut reaction, but out of a response that is filled with the knowledge of the glory of God. The reason that we do this work of practice is because our, our sort of conceptual values about the people we want to be in this world, we will never be them unless you practice them when it's hard. Do you know this to be true? Your aspirational self, and I hate to tell you this, but without actual practice, is kind of worthless. Like, I want to be my best self ever. Well, guess what that's going to take? Walking through some mud and becoming that person when it's super hard. Eric and Pastor Adrian and I interviewed a woman called uh, Miss Joanne Bland. She'll be on a podcast in February. She was, uh, she marched with King when she was eight years old. She's from Selma. She was arrested multiple times by the time she was a teenager. She was trained in nonviolent resistance. And what that means is she sat at a counter before she was a teenager, people practicing, spitting at her, swearing at her, cursing at her, so she could sit there and respond out of something of like, the glory of God that was on the face of Christ. Could she do that because she woke up one day and thought that's a good idea to do? No. She actually said, like, I thought that was dumb. But I practiced becoming the kind of person who could hold that space with Jesus, anticipating what's to come in my future so as to become a radically different kind of human being when I get there. That's what the practice of anticipation is meant to do for us. So we looked back, we looked ahead, and I want to remind us as we close to be present. The psalmist says, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there, your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. So right now, as we close, I want you to pay attention to the right now moment that you're in. Right now, God is present to you. Right now. No matter what's happening around you, no matter what's happening around you in the wider world, God is present to you right now. And he will be in the right now that is in an hour from now and in two hours from now and in a day from now. And so at any time, 
you can just pause and pay attention and practice that prayer of examine and say, God, thank you that you're with me. Thank you that you never leave me. Thank you, no matter where I go, that you are here with me now. And friends, this is a hard thing to practice because we so often feel that God is so far away, sometimes because of what we're going through and sometimes because of the conditions of our hearts. And so it's a good thing to remind ourselves and to remember that despite what we're going through and despite the conditions of our hearts, that God, you love me and you are with me even here, even now. Amen. One of the things that Julie and I want to invite you into uh, this week. So I mentioned a year ago, we started a daily devotional called Be Still. It's 10 minutes every day. You can either get on YouTube, you can get on any place, you get a podcast and just start your day. And this is a way to do what Julie is describing, which is practice the presence right here, right now. So I want to invite you to engage with that as we begin our new year. Well, campuses, Happy New Year. We want to bless you and release you to your campus pastors to close in prayer. And if you're online, if you would stay with us, and those of you here, would you stand? And we're going to just take some time and pray for one another and worship the Lord. I think what, what, um, what we'll do for a time of ministry, and I don't know, maybe you've got another thought, but some of you, when I, when I did say, like, anticipate a thing this coming year, for some of you, that is crystal clear. Perhaps there's a diagnosis, you know you're going to begin treatment. Perhaps it has to do with school or something like that. Um, perhaps it has to do with something happening in your family, but you're really clear that there is something coming this year and it is going to be a challenge for me. And one of the practices that we have as Christians is that we can take things, and in the Old Testament, this idea of consecration, setting something apart to make it holy, had to do with a lot of instruments that the church used. So you would, you know, consecrate a chalice or something that, or you'd, uh, people would consecrate themselves and set themselves apart to make it holy. One of the things I think we can do as Christians is we can consecrate certain things that we are anticipating, and we ask, Lord, Lord, even though this thing that I'm entering into is going to be difficult, I'm moving into a diagnostic conversation with my kid's doctor about my kid. It's going to be challenging, Lord, but would you consecrate that space and make it be holy? Would you give me good eyes so that I can see you and find you in it? Would you help me respond in the way that you would call me to respond and not react out of my own fear or anxiety? There's all sorts of things that are coming your way, but if you are very clear on a particular situation that is coming to you in 2024, we would love to invite you forward as we end, and we're just going to pray a blessing over you. Lord, would you consecrate this thing? Some of you are discerning still what colleges you're going to go to. And it's like, I don't know. I'm just making pros and cons lists, and they're always exactly the same, and they don't help. What we want to invite you into is give that to the Lord. Let us pray for you and ask the Lord, Lord, would you make this thing holy, no matter how difficult it may be, so that I can become the kind of person in that space that you want me to be. So in, actually, let's have our prayer ministry team. If those of you are here, some pastors, we're going to start coming forward now. But if that's you, if that applies to you, you know that there's something in 2024 that you're anticipating. And you just want to like, Lord, help me be real present to you in this thing. Would you come forward right now? And our prayer ministry team is going to come forward. We're going to pray for each other. Do you have anything else? Yeah, the only thing that I want to invite us to, those of you who are uh, going to remain in your chairs, is Paul is going to sing a song and lead us in a closing song of worship. And there are some of you who really struggle with finding God in the present. 
maybe feeling God's presence or experiencing God, knowing that God is with you. And you know, worship is one of the gifts that God has given us to recognize and to experience his presence. And one of the things I want to invite you to do, if you struggle with this idea of like connecting with God, receiving God, experiencing God in the present, one of the things I want to invite you to do as we sing is to involve your body. Maybe you don't normally sing out loud. I wanna invite you to sing out loud. Uh, maybe open your hands, maybe cover your heart. You may wanna get down on your knees. It's in engaging with your body that we very often experience the presence of God. And so as we close about God's presence, he's gonna be singing about God's presence. I wanna invite you to engage in one of those ways as we close. Mm -hmm. Oh, and just one more thing. I feel like there's a couple of folks here and you've been coming to church for quite some time and you've never come forward to get prayer. And you always think to yourself, I kind of feel like I should come forward to get prayer but you're a bit too like all that to do it. Like you're a bit too like resistant or whatever. You don't think it's actually gonna work or you feel kind of like cheesy or something like that. If that's you, I just felt like the Lord wants to sort of put his finger on you and say, look, it's the last Sunday of 2023. If you've thought to yourself, maybe I should hop up there and see if the Lord would meet me. I think you should just give it a go. We'll pray for you and then let you go on your way. So bless you all. We need a couple of other prayer leaders, prayer team members to come and pray over here, please. Where can I go from your presence? Where can I run from your spirit, you meet me here? Spirit, you meet me here. Where can I go from your presence? Where can I hide from your spirit, you find me there? Spirit, you find me there. From the highest highs to the lowest lows, from the mountain tops to the valley below, you meet me here, Spirit, you meet me here. You go before me, your love surrounds me, changing the atmosphere. Where can I go? Where can I go from your presence? Where can I run from your spirit? You meet me here. Spirit, you meet me here. Where can I go from your presence? Where can I run from your spirit? You meet me there. Spirit, you meet me there. From the highest highs to the lowest lows, from the mountain tops to the valleys below, you meet me here. Spirit. For me, your love surrounds me, changing the atmosphere. You don't give up, even when I do. You don't walk out when I threaten to. You are steady when I can't be still. Your love finds me. And it always will. You don't give up, even when I do. You don't walk 
We come to this time in our service each week. And it's a reminder at this time of communion that we need God in our lives. All of us here, none of us are perfect. Yet we try all our human ways to fix the things in our lives that needs to be fixed instead of remembering that God has done all the work necessary for us to be in right relationship with him by sending his son to the cross. And so as we go to communion today, as we remember the finished work of Christ, I just want to ask any of you, as we go into this new year, if you haven't made Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life, just in the quietness of your heart right now, it, has, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Just say, Lord Jesus, come. Come in my heart, make me new. Change me. Help me be the person that you want me to be. I can't do it on my own. So invite him into your heart. And so, Lord, we, we come this week and we're reminded of the night you were with your disciples, how you broke the bread. And you said, this is my body given for you. Whenever you do it, do it in remembrance of me. Let's take the bread. After supper, the Lord took the cup. And he said, this is the new covenant in my blood given for you. Drink it in remembrance of me. Let's take the cup. Reminder, you could always text the word PRAY to 98977 to receive prayer. A few quick things before you go. You have one more chance tonight to worship together with the church. Come back here. The doors open at 7. There's a buffet going at 7.30. Anytime in between, you can celebrate and just hang out with one another. The service will start at 10.30 for watch night this evening right here at Westerville. So we invite you back. It'll be a great time. So invite a friend or a family member. Um, second thing Eric and Julia talked about is some of the resources that we have for you in this coming year. Be Still Podcast, as well as some new Bible reading plans. Uh, all of this is on our This Week page. You can go to vineyardcolumbus.org slash this week. Please, there's no better time to start a new uh, habit and the discipline of reading and engaging with the Word of God. So we encourage you to check that out. Lastly, we are starting a new sermon series next week on the Old Testament book of Ruth. 
Uh, it's all about redemption. So if that's a way that you'd like to start the new year, please invite a friend, uh, bring some family members and join us on Sunday. Let's pray and we'll be dismissed. Your Father, we thank you for your faithfulness this year. Jesus Christ, our Lord, we're grateful that you are same yesterday, today, and forever. Holy Spirit, comforter and sustainer of our being, we invite you now, just as you have been faithful throughout this year, to lead us into this next year. We worship you, God, and we look to you, and we thank you. We lift this in your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Church, see you next year, if not tonight.